one day we'll have intro music, but like, not today. Hi, welcome to Don't Quote Me On That. I'm Kalina. And I'm Eleanor. And this is the show where we kind of talk about movies. Yes, it is. Today is a show where we do talk about a movie. And we should be keeping track of how many times we do versus how many times we don't. <laughs> I definitely think the do list has um, less less little like check marks on it than the don't. Still a few, few, a few fewer. <laughs> We're starting but, um, off strong today, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, I'm really excited about today's episode. This episode is about a movie that I love, and I think if you watch this movie, Eleanor and I did a show a while ago, two shows, and one she had me listen to like a One Direction album. And then I had her listen to an Eagles album for another show. And, like, afterwards, I felt like we had, like, the deeper understanding of each other as people. And I think if you watch this movie, you'll have a deeper understanding of me as a person. Yeah, what I will admit, the the Eagles album, I don't think, made me understand you as much as the One Direction album maybe made you understand me. Mm -hmm. um, but watching this movie did make a lot of things click. So and it's I get it now. Not a it's not a movie I watched like when I was like that was really foundational and I used to watch a lot when I was growing up but I think I was like when I finally when I first saw the movie I was already headed in that direction and then like that just really cemented it in for me and also this movie is based off of my favorite Shakespeare play so it's mm. just a two for one for me so what are we talking it. about Eleanor what what are we talking about Eleanor Okay, so we are talking about another movie made in the 2000s because I think that's basically our shtick now yeah um it's a 2006 romantic comedy sports film mm. uh called she's the man like kalina mm. said it is a it's inspired i wouldn't say it's a direct remake but it's it's heavily mm. inspired by 12th night by shakespeare um and it's a movie about soccer it also has the longest tagline i think i have ever seen in a movie um yeah <laughs> which is my first issue with it it's, i think um, they were trying to like summarize the whole they just try to summarize the whole premise because it gets confusing because they in the movie they it, switch genders it, it's a little just, so the tagline is everybody has a secret duke wants olivia who likes sebastian who is really viola whose brother is dating monique so she hates olivia who's with duke to make sebastian jealous who's really viola who's crushing on duke who thinks she's a guy yeah which that is what happens. So, <laughs> That's the whole movie right there. You actually don't need to watch anything else. <laughs> they get points for that. <laughs> but I think everybody has a secret. Maybe like that also works. I left it there. Yeah. I will say I don't think the, the Duke being with the Olivia being with Duke. I don't think that thing necessarily lasts long enough to get a spot in the uh, tagline. Yeah. I think but, I, oh, I think the way it's written is Olivia thinks she's with she likes to think she's with the Duke and I think the Duke he was into her and then and then it went away very it went out the window very quickly so yeah it's kind of one sided but, but um I have I got like real pen and paper out I have pages oh. of notes so <laughs> that um, was me for Scott Pilgrim <laughs> <laughs> I did I was inspired by Kalina's meticulous notes for Scott Pilgrim if only we could do that in class we'd be um, right now, my plan is to trick my friend who's in Stanford into marrying me. Um, it's not working very well. I think because I told him that was the plan, I don't think I should have told him. Which no, and like, especially the trick part. Like, maybe yeah. we should have been like, yeah, one day we should get married. That'd be so cute. Ha ha. But like, don't <laughs> mention the trick part. Um, that actually brings me to my main critique of the movie. Okay. Um, which very nice segue. I didn't write until the end, but I, I do think it's very important. If you are scheming or otherwise plotting and another person is involved, they need to remain updated. Yes. If you have like, like, you know, if you want to sleep over at your, if you want to tell your mom you're sleeping over at your friend's house, but you're really going out with some guy, your friend needs to know that she is involved in the lie. And mm -hmm. your friend also needs to know, like, if you get a text from your mom that says, you know, your uncle just died, you need to tell your friend that 
so that your friend, you know, doesn't get a call that's like, so-and-so's uncle died, and you're like, I've never met that person in my whole life. You just, you need to keep everybody updated. Mm -hmm. You need to be a united front. I agree. Um, today, Eleanor was talking about starting a fight in the comments on TikTok, which we have a TikTok, you should follow it. And she was like, is it okay if I do that? And I was like, look, you do what you want. I appreciate you letting me know. But you look, you go. If we start a fight, I will back you up. No questions asked. I will need a debrief at some point in time. But like, <laughs> well, that's the thing. Just... I just, I like being, oh, God, this is gonna sound really bad. Um, if I'm gonna be mean, I just want to be mean and then leave it there. Um, mm -hmm. I don't want to, like, have to keep rehashing it. So, like, for me, it's a, I'm just going to say it and then walk away. But, like, you mm -hmm. might feel differently on that. So, I just needed to let you know that it was coming. I, that reminds me, and there's another nice little segue. We're so good at these. Um, I think people have a tendency to say this about girls versus guys. Whereas, and, and uh, I'll, be, I'll be honest, I've said it myself. Whereas a girl, if you have a problem with the girl and you say it to her, it usually has a tendency to turn into a like a thing whereas like guys hit each other in the face all the time and they're like all right cool we're sorted and they'll yeah. move on from that and i think when my segue is i think with this movie they did it i think it would have been easy to kind of fall into girls are so guys are so much better than girls and easier to get along with even though again that wasn't the point but i think it would have been easy because of because of the it was made in the 2000s and the premise of the movie is a girl pretending to be a guy I think it would have been easy to fall into that, and I think they did. I think they really did a really good job of maintaining. There's nothing wrong with being a girly girl and being a typical girl. Like that's fine. You can be whatever you want. Just like don't be rude, essentially. Yeah, I I do think it kind of did a good. It, I don't think it relied on like gender jokes as much as it could have, which I think mm -hmm. is very good. I think it would have been very easy to devolve things to like girl versus girl very catty especially because they were supposed to be growing up in like this very prestigious like kind of snobby um social society mm -hmm. and it wasn't it was more like you're an awful person and i hate you but it's only because you're an awful person <laughs> yeah it wasn't you know i hate you because you're dating my brother it was you're insufferable and i don't like mm -hmm. that which yeah she was it's fair um and she did the same thing to her boyfriend so yeah i will say i don't think we got enough like we were told that we were supposed to we were told we were supposed, basically, we were told we were, oh my goodness, I'm sorry, I cannot talk today. We were told we were supposed to We were to told something. we were supposed to dislike Monique from the, from the get, and mm -hmm. I think there should have been at least, you know, 30 seconds of her being a little bit um, oh. rude or insufferable mm -hmm. before we were told. Like, at the end, we totally got it, but I just think there should have been just a little bit. Just a little bit of setup. Just a titch, just a titch more setup, yeah. Yeah. Um, another thing... I guess I can just, do you want me to just read my notes in chronological order? That's why I took them. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> my first um, note is the opening credits song is really bad. I'm not hopeful for this movie. <laughs> did I you did like, not like the movie? Uh, no, I didn't. Jesus. <laughs> I well, like... you should have started with that. Well, I liked I liked it at the end, but it took me a long time to get there. Fair enough, fair enough. Um, <laughs> my next thing is, uh, here, here I, I wrote some discussion questions while I was writing this. Uh, my mm -hmm. first one is, would, would you learn a sport for a boy? I said, no. possibly. Well, oh, not a chance. I have sat down and watched someone play video games for hours and i feel like that's kind of the same thing like if i there's if i care enough for, to do that then i would not like a sport that has too many rules like i'd learn how to kick a soccer ball properly if he was cute enough oh i did write end of discussion end of relationship best great. i liked that part great I'm that... Glad, okay, if you didn't bring that up i was gonna bring that up <laughs> that's the only correct answer Mm -hmm. Yeah, her boyfriend was being, he was, um, basically, he was fronting in front of his friends, to give, give you a short story. He was, he was, and, and mm -hmm. when they were together, he was like, babe, you're such a good soccer player, you're better than all the boys, and then when she brought that up, he was like, yeah, no, I never said that, I don't know it's what like, she's talking about, I don't know crazy. her. And she was like, what are you talking about? And he was like, end of discussion, babe, and she was like, okay, fine, yeah. end of relationship, goodbye. Yeah, don't Which is how I deal with people. Yeah, that's true. It's... <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. That's when I was first like, oh, I get it. Kalina, this makes sense. Like at one point, somebody told Kalina to watch her tone, and I don't think she ever spoke to that person ever again. Um, let's see. Oh, I said, why are teens so mean to their mom? That's something I don't understand. In a lot of movies we've watched, people are just like, look, sometimes you have to be mean to your parents if they're being incredibly unread. Like, there are some situations where it's okay. Um, your mother just wanting you to wear a dress and be involved in something that means a lot to her that wouldn't, it just like takes, takes a couple afternoons. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I get stressed out when I hear people like talk about, like I get saying, oh, my mom did this. That's, ugh, it's annoying. But like, I, I get really stressed out, especially when I was in high school and people would like complain about their parents and call them names. Like, I just yeah. couldn't fathom that. Like, I heard people call their mom the B word all the time. And I was like, I, no matter how mad I was at my mother, I wouldn't even think that, let alone say that out loud to someone about her. I would, but also my mother and I call each other that, like, not always in a mean way. So that's kind See, that's of allowed, a, I, but. I guess that's a little different. But, like, I would never say that to my mother, even jokingly. So, mm -hmm. like, I wouldn't even, I just think it's it's rude. There's some things, I think parents is one, siblings and in a relationship, there's some things you don't say to other people about, like, specific yeah. people in your life. And, like, it, with you, I, I would never call you. I have sometimes just because the word's a big part of my vocabulary. But I do try not to call you that because I know it's, I don't know, like, you don't receive it like I'm trying to say it no matter, like, even though you know yeah, that that's like, not how I that mean word. it. Yeah. I wouldn't throw that word around. Yeah, I get what you're saying. So like there's... Yeah, and again, you gotta think like you gotta think of your your audience at mm -hmm. the end of the day. Not everyone's gonna take like even if you're joking, not everyone's gonna take it that way. Yeah. Um. But yeah, but also, she was just dress she was very mean to her mom. Also, I really don't she's... understand. So there's a scene. The brother is mm -hmm. talking. So they're twins and they have divorced parents, and the brother is talking about how the mom thinks that he's at dad's house and dad thinks he's at mom's house. And then he's like, and they both think I'm going to school in two weeks, but he's going to London with his band. And the brother says, that's the beauty of divorce. I don't think the writers had divorced parents. And if the writers did have divorced parents, they never got over it. Like it still haunts them. Also, <laughs> the families were supposed to be very well off. And I feel like they would either have a prenup or at least be able to afford very good lawyers, which means that they would have like court agreed upon custody arrangements. And typically, and you've you been can't, disappeared for two weeks. <laughs> yeah, you can't just switch off like that. Um, also, I, at first, I thought he was going, he was ditching high, uh, ditching college because I didn't realize they were twins for a while. Mm -hmm. um, so I wrote some things on That's that. That's the main but, premise of the movie. But yeah, please continue. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't catch on to that. Um, anyway, and then um, he said, high school, don't don't drop out of high school like I know he didn't drop out but like don't just miss like don't my question is and maybe you can answer this but I haven't actually like sat down and watched this movie in a while what was she supposed to be doing because I presume Viola also was supposed to be enrolled at school yeah, somewhere she was supposed to be enrolled in Cornwall and there was just because what happened was he and like she wasn't doing double work or no anything. she first of all they were only ever in one class the whole movie which different thing <laughs> Um, she, yeah, I guess she was supposed to be at Cornwall, and he was supposed to be at Illyria because he got kicked out of Cornwall, but there was no mm -hmm. mention on what he, she was, like, was she just <laughs> sick for two weeks? And, like, if you don't go to school for that long, your parents get, like, I don't, they don't mention that. And I think they don't mention that on purpose because they couldn't think of anything that made sense. Because nothing well, like, would make sense. Okay, my other thing. Okay, next note. Um... The next note I have is Paul the hairdresser could get it. Moving on. Um, so there's this scene. Double check of Paul the hairdresser look like. Don't so do that. Don't do that. Please don't do that. <laughs> no, nope, I'm doing it. It's too late. Open the next video. Keep talking. There's this scene. So basically, she goes to Paul the hairdresser and she gets like b b buoyed up. Um, and then there's this scene where she's walking around the street and she's walking behind men and mimicking what they're walking like so she can embody a man um 
And it made me think of this exercise that I used to have to do when I was a theater kid, where you'd kind of walk around the room and you'd slowly incorporate elements of whatever character you were playing. Did you ever have to do that? No, but we did have to walk around like, like we all picked an animal and you had to walk around and incorporate elements of that. And I think, I don't remember if we had okay. to guess or like, sometimes she'd call somebody out and say, what animal were you? That's similar enough. That's kind of what. I didn't do that. Yeah, that's the other thing. I could not be a theater kid because I just, that's just embarrassing. Um, there's, so basically the whole movie, well, while, she, while she's playing a boy, she uses ace bandages to keep her breasts from being there. Don't do that. Know, Don't do that. That's so show. dangerous. That is because so, they'll tighten as you move and don't, don't do that if you're gonna look if you have boobs and you don't want them to be as prominent as they are either buy a binder or buy a good sports bra do not use an ace bandage that will do more harm in the long run than it will do good don't do that um, my favorite way that viola tried to cover up her like her binding her chest was when she went to soccer practice for the first time and the guy was like and it was like it's hot outside okay it's like real it's like summertime or something and the guy was like Oh, uh, basically, he's like, why do you got the coach? He's like, why do you have a hoodie on? Blah, blah, blah. And she goes, I'm no, no. She, allergic to the sun. He says, we're doing shirts and skins. And oh, yeah. she says, I have to be sure. And then she says, I'm allergic to the sun. And he goes, to the sun? She's like, yeah, I'm just very deathly allergic to the sun. Just got a full hoodie on. And I just, I, um, I don't know. I think this movie's so funny. That, that one was just, funny. It's hilarious. And... I think it's very believable, like, her, like, she yeah. didn't plan this out at all, so every time she encounters something, she's like, oh, God, I gotta come up with something right now. Yeah, every time someone questions it, she just opens her mouth and is very surprised by what she says. Yeah, it's a surprise, yeah, it's, it's new, it's, like, new information for everyone involved. <laughs> um, let's see, here's my first note about Channing Tatum. I said, 18 minutes in, she will end up with Channing Tatum, which, duh. Thank you, Eleanor. <laughs> There's also this, the movie. there's this scene where, um, so she gets put onto the soccer team and she's second string, mm -hmm. which means not the main soccer players. <laughs> um, anyway, they, there's a scene where they come into the room of, I don't know if it's the second string players or just the new players and they start mm -hmm. hazing them. And I wrote, this is an SVU episode. Um, also, I, th I think this was in the scene with the shower, when she showered for the first time. I don't understand why she didn't just cut her hair. Like, I know... I, I don't know, I know yeah. part of it was that she had to play a girl sometimes, but just cut your hair. Like, if you're that dedicated, just cut your hair. Yeah, and then she could have just pretended to be Sebastian growing his hair out. Like, she wouldn't have to have... have she wouldn't yeah. have to cut it again. And it would have been probably easier for her to put on a long wig to play a yeah, girl. Than exactly. keep putting on a short wig. Because there are a couple times where she changes very quickly, and she had way too much hair to just be able to pop a short wig on. Like, you have to, like, tie yeah, like that thousands. down. I have, I used to have, I know we're not supposed to question it too much, but I have so many questions about the logistics. I couldn't, like, get... Anyway, Channing Tatum, I don't, like, think Channing Tatum is super cute, but Channing Tatum will do things that I think are super cute. Like, I think he's adorable in this movie. He was in, um... The, the Kingsman movie sequel and he played like a, a cowboy spy and like that was <laughs> that was great for me also him in 21 Jump Street is adorable but mostly because he's just funny I don't think he's cute um apparently Channing Tatum was like 26 when they filmed this movie mm -hmm. um and Amanda Bynes was not that age I don't know if she was like a full <laughs> teenager but apparently Channing Tatum was a lot older I don't know if it's just I'm more used to seeing him now that he, so he looks really young in the movie but I don't think he looked especially old no I think yeah I think he looked like the age he was playing yeah I'm trying to do some quick math here so oh yeah she I would have been 20 okay she was born in 1986 and this was 2006 so she would have been about 20 and he let's see was 26 that's not too bad no and he it's not like it's not like glee where you could tell that they were way too old yeah. to be doing yeah, that yeah like like in glee how like 
Oh, you know what's really weird? Not Glee, but Hannah Montana. Not weird. But, like, that Jason Earl guy was, like, 30, like 30. when he was filming Hannah Montana. And then he went, he was on Kicking It. I don't know if I ever told you that. He was on Kicking mm-hmm. It after. And he was playing someone... I guess he was playing someone older than his character in Hannah Montana, but still, mm-hmm. like, not as old as he was. I had just a lot of questions about that man. Yeah. But, like, also, you could tell me he was any age, and I believe you. He's got the face for it. He he does. He looks... Anyway, he looked good. He was really cute. I don't think he's super cute. I think he's cuter in this movie than he is in anything else. And apparently this was his first, like, big film role. Did the wife beater on? It was probably the wife beater. I'll be honest. A little bit. A little bit. Um, also, there t- I don't know if it's right now or it's later, but um, Channing Tatum and Amanda Bynes as a boy are talking about how to talk to girls. And one of the openers that Amanda Bynes as a boy suggests is, do you like cheese? And oh, yeah. in the movie, <laughs> that's treated as a bad conversation starter. I think that's a brilliant conversation starter. Yeah, because he's like, I don't know how to talk to girls. And she's like, well, you just got to, you know, you just got to get a conversation flowing. You just got to ask her questions. It doesn't matter what it is. And he was like, why would I ask her if she likes cheese? I don't care. And he's like, she's like, that doesn't matter. As long as she answers, you got a conversation happening. Yeah, like it can lead to, you know, no, I'm a vegan and that's a whole thing. mm -hmm. Or it's like, yes, but not on pizza. And that's a whole thing. Or no, I don't like it. I only eat whatever. And that's a whole thing. And then. You know, they start talking about being a vegan. It's a very easy segue into, oh, were you raised like that? And then you can talk about your families. Or, oh, did you not? I about this too much. No, I had a lot of beef with them saying that, that, that they treated that like a bad <laughs> conversation. It's not. Especially, like. And I think it's different enough. Like, I think girls probably have heard the same lines over and over again. Mm-hmm. So if someone started out with, do you like cheese? I'd be confused and interested enough uh, to answer and have a conversation. Like, you know, next time you're on Tinder... Because that's all the time, right? <laughs> <laughs> Try that. Do you like cheese? Like, it won't work. Yeah, I don't know what the regular pickup lines are. Um, I think but... the regular pickup line is just a picture of... Eleanor, it's a family show. I didn't say anything. It, you know, picture of your dog. There's a scene where they have a carnival. And the carnival, I mm-hmm. guess, is put on in connection to this debutante ball that's kind of like a B plot that isn't really focused on very often. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's a carnival, and it's put on for children, and there's a kissing booth. Mm-hmm. Um, and at it, Amanda Bynes has to be her brother and herself because yes. her, her parents don't know that her their son is in London and also, Amanda Bynes, as a girl, has to... And it's very confusing. It's like, you know, the height of the boy-girl antics, right? Yeah. Um, she changes into jeans in a spinning teacup. <laughs> you... <laughs> and then she had to change in a bouncy castle, which was fine, but there were... Oh. Cho- I don't know. No, I don't see that's impossible. A bouncy castle? It was empty at first. Also, oh, okay. um, her friends are the most... Paul the hairdresser and her friends are the most loyal people in this whole show. Yeah, you and need people like that around you. It again shows that if you are scheming, you need to let your schemers know <laughs> what's going on. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. What are kissing booths? Why do they exist? Do those happen and in real life? They raise money. I don't know. I've never seen one in real life, but I think it's just to oh. like raise money. So you just pick a hot person, and it's like a dollar a kiss or something. And there were like actual children deal. and old men. Also, there was a joke that was like, "You see that old man with gum? It's not gum." What? It, what does that mean? Like, what are we supposed to assume is in the old man's mouth? <laughs> <laughs> You're asking the wrong person. I don't know. <laughs> I know, I didn't like that. Um, oh, okay, so then there, so Amanda Bynes as a boy and Channing Tatum were in their shared dorm room. Mm-hmm. And they're talking about Channing Tatum kissing Amanda Bynes as a girl, which he thinks is his roommate's sister. Mm-hmm. And she's like asking questions about it because she's into him and like wants to gauge if he's into her. 
-hmm. But like, I, I, this is going to come to a surprise. Like, this is going to surprise everyone. I am painfully an only child. Okay, I I know, I know, I know. Me. If you if you follow us on TikTok, you do know that. Yeah, you do. Um, if you've heard me talk for it. more than thirty seconds, you do know that. I wouldn't want to hear about my sibling kissing somebody. Like you, that's not no. a normal thing to. Oh my god! Like I know there are yeah, reasons mom... she was pressing, but like. Um. Anyway, after that, they talk about like liking girls and how to be vulnerable with girls and. Um, Viola does this really weird thing. Well, it's, I, it's, it, it wasn't weird in the context, but basically she's talking about herself being hot, but as her twin brother. And then Channing Tatum's like, bro, I like girls for more than that. Like, I just, I want to have oh, conversations yeah. with them. And I wrote. That's why he was so cute in that movie. Okay. Actually, Lena's not going to like what I wrote. <laughs> I wrote, boy is hero for not wanting to talk about boobs. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like, I don't think it should have been lauded as this great thing. I know there's one scene where they're talking about, I don't I don't think Duke's there, but it's two of the other soccer players. And one of them goes, is your sister hot? And Sebastian's like, well, Viola asks Sebastian's like, yeah, I mean, I guess so. She's got a nice personality. And the guys go, ew. <laughs> so, like, by comparison, he's doing, like. Oh, yeah. No, I would right. rather somebody be, like, him. It was just, it was just kind of funny. Um, yeah, no. My next note is awful soundtrack i did not give that i think the soundtrack is bad um oh and then channing tatum talks about or no viola as sebastian asks duke if he wants to get viola's number and i was just very confused as to the logistics of that because i feel like maybe clinic can such shed, shed some light on this if your teammates do you not have like their phone number like, yes, yes, you do, or yes, you don't. Well, in that scenario, yes, you would, or you'd probably you'd like have a, you'd at the very least have someone else on the team, like someone on the team would have some their everyone's phone number. Cause like, does she have her brother's phone? Because the only time we saw him call, it was on a payphone in London. Maybe I just I had a so lot like of questions, call... but then yeah, um the sebastian's real girlfriend was mm -hmm. given her phone uh, uh, sebastian's phone for some reason and she was like this is viola's phone so like i don't think she thought that through and then there were other scenes where she called channing katum from her cell phone so like there was no way he had sebastian maybe it's different because it's a boarding school because then i started thinking i didn't get your phone number until after we moved out but like we still yeah. had a way. I don't know. I just I had a lot of questions about that, and and I was thinking I'm overthinking maybe they it. could like they were roommates, so they probably wouldn't have to like speak to each other yeah. on the phone like and and text they each other. We're in so boarding. So it's school. possible they were like yeah they were like in a group chat maybe like team wise, and like maybe he just never saved her number in the group chat. You know what I mean? So like when he got Sebastian's Viola's number, it was really Sebastian mm -hmm. Sebastian's number. Um, you know he never was like oh these are the same. That's fair. Oh, also, the the soccer coach from Illyria was calling mm -hmm. the player idiots. Are coaches allowed to be mean like that? Does it depend on the sport? Because if somebody um, talks to me like that, sport, I'd cry. I definitely think... Um, it depends on the sport. It depends on if you're, like, split up by, like... I don't know. Long story short. Depends on the sport. I think so. Especially back then, they weren't... Um, focused on player well-being and fair. general happiness oh. <laughs> like a lot of my assignments that i've had this last semester have been about like we had to design an intervention specifically focusing like the main focus had to be the player well-being mm -hmm. so like I, we're making strides to that now but i think it's because all that damage was done then okay. oh another thing same coach um at at i'm skipping to the end of the movie just because this is in the same vein um when they find out that sebastian is a girl uh, mm -hmm. the opposing team's coach is like, well, girls aren't allowed to play on this league. And the coach of Illyria is like, we don't discriminate against gender. But he spent the whole movie calling his players like ladies and cupcakes and things like that. So like, I, I appreciate the stand, but like, yeah, yeah, you do. You, you just did. Well, yeah, but like, you can be a, a non-cupcakey lady. 
but he, and they were just really he straight up cupcake-y. called them ladies when they were mm-hmm. playing badly. Well, you can be a non-lady lady, okay? <laughs> I think that was the point of the movie. <laughs> okay. It's just like, I was like, I'm all here for that, but um, let's see. Oh, there's this one. I didn't write, I didn't write who said this. I think it was Channing Tatum. I think it was Channing Tatum. Um, he was talking to a pretty girl and he had to leave a conversation. He said, I got to change my feet. <laughs> yeah, he did. <laughs> he was working out and he was super, he was really distraught. I think it was when Olivia was like, Olivia oh. was asking him about how much he benches and she, he, he was like 225 and she was like 225. That's more like than twice what I weigh. Yeah, something Shut like up. that. And she was like, how many, how, he was like, she was like, how much do you do? 20. And he, he was like 20 and she goes, Oh, how many of me could you bench then? And, and he's sitting there going, 40. <laughs> and then she says, yeah, and then he gets the phone call and he goes, yeah, I gotta go change my feet. Moving on. Um, her brother comes back from London unexpectedly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Which, if you're scheduled for a festival for your band... Like, he couldn't, he needed to throw in, like, there needed to be one line of why he was coming home early. Just, you know, the festival got canceled. Everybody got mad cow disease. Some, there needed to be something. Because he was just like, oh, yeah, I'm I'm going home early. And he told and he his band, girlfriend, but he didn't. Ta- anyway, he gets home. He's in a taxi t- to come to school. And then Olivia mm-hmm. comes up thinking that it's Viola as Sebastian kisses him and then just runs away i don't think that's a good tactic. like i've never tried that tactic myself but i don't think it's a good one yeah because like i don't think it was effective were they just supposed to find each other the next day and be like oh yeah that kiss was crazy like i know it was the middle of the night and maybe they had a curfew but <laughs> at least a lot of things need to be explained in this movie. <laughs> they really, really do i had a lot of problems with the with the minor details yeah um <laughs> yeah and then um i think duke sees them kiss yeah duke so does he's see like, them oh kiss. my god my homies my homies betrayed me oh also real quick back to the beginning of the movie when um <laughs> viola's first talking to the boys she first meets them and she says something like yeah that's what's up bro brothers brethren and she's like trying to pretend to be a dude or she's like walking into the place and she's yeah. like I am a badass hunky dude. I have a big hunky <laughs> shoe. Like I can, it's like trying to psych herself up to pretend to be a guy. Those parts were were golden. But uh, also, I think um, not to get too off tangent. I think this is like Amanda Bynes. I think this is like peak um, like Amanda Bynes era, I mm-hmm. guess. And I think this is like her. This is my favorite thing she's ever did. I think my favorite thing Amanda good. Bynes has ever been in is the sitcom she was in. I think it was called What I Like About You. Mm-hmm. It was on ABC Family, now Freeform. I don't know how long it lasted, but it was. I think it was around the same time. It was so good. It was so funny. I remember liking that show a heck of a lot. Um, do you have... Anyway, yeah, but Duke sees them... Sorry, yes? Oh, no, yeah, go ahead. No, I was going to say Duke sees them kiss, so he's like, oh my god, my homie. Yeah, it's and then horrible. they get into a little tiff... The night before the big soccer game. Um, and also the brother, the real brother, comes home the night before the big soccer game. So I was going to ask if you had any thoughts um, about anything prior to the big soccer game. Because that's I have a lot of notes about the big soccer game. So I just want to let you say your side of the... Take a shot every time Eleanor says big soccer game. <laughs> it wasn't like the playoffs or anything. I can't call it anything else. It was just, you know... The, the climax. The climax of the film. The, the film. Oh boy, we real Irish people here. Um, no, no thoughts. I think, I think they did a good job, Sebastian. I think they did a job, good job casting someone who looked like Amanda. Best. Oh, sorry. I actually, I read on the the IMDb page that they were planning on uh, casting Jesse McCartney as Sebastian because they look okay. so similar. I would have really liked that. I think they do look a lot alike. I. Well, I know I picture Jesse McCartney with like, like blonde hair. So maybe like brown hair. Jesse McCartney. Um, also, her hair changes. Like the real, real yes. Viola's hair changes color throughout the whole movie. Yes. I liked her hair though. Like she, she had like the little highlights going on. I thought that was cute. I liked it better dark. Well, but again, maybe, it should have been when, one. um, 
Maybe when your homeboy, like, did her up as a guy, maybe he was just like, um, as he's like, this could use a touch-up. I could just do that while we're here. But Paul, it, like, it. switched Paul. back and forth. Like, not even, okay, like... Okay, Eleanor? I know. I know. Also, Channing Tatum hair she was in the sun a lot. the whole time. I just, I have a lot of questions. Like, they did, they obviously didn't have a script supervisor. And I can say that because I now have a degree in media. So, I know you do too. Yeah. Like you're letting things go, but. I'd, no, I'd love to be like a continuity supervisor. This I'd be so on it. Everyone would hate me. I'd be like, no, I'm sorry. That glass was um, an inch fuller than it is right now. I need you to fix that. <laughs> yeah. No, anyway, I'm sorry. I don't have any that thoughts on anything before turned the big around. Game. Yeah, so big sports game, big mm -hmm. ball day. Um, so Sebastian got kicked out of his so Viola Sebastian got kicked out of her room with Channing Tatum mm -hmm. because he was grumpy. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. and she goes to sleep in the same room as Eunice. Who said she never had a roommate, but then had two beds in her room. Um, I think you have to explain who Eunice is. Oh yeah, Eunice is just some girl that they're mean to the whole movie for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. That is, that's a very good, accurate description. She's described here as the, uh, in the Wikipedia page, she's described as the nerdy and eccentric classmate with weird sexual fantasies. Which I think they could have just dropped the last... Four words. She and doesn't just left her alone. I don't think she has weird. She just likes boys. She's just yeah, but she's she's nerdy and eccentric, so she's not allowed to do that. Obviously. Obviously. Anyway. Only hot people are allowed to. Have she boys. also has a crush on Sebastian, Viola. Um. Also, Amanda Bynes is cute. Okay, Amanda Bynes is not that cute, and Amanda Bynes as a boy with that awful weight, also not that cute. I wouldn't have given, especially standing next to Channing Tatum, I wouldn't have given him a set, her a second glance. Mm -hmm. I think maybe maybe it's the nice guy thing though. I remember like like oh, yeah. Sebastian obviously wouldn't come across as like a stereotypical dude. Like that's not the energy Viola Sebastian would give off. So maybe it's just that they're like, oh, they seem so nice and in touch with yeah. their feeling. Um, because it seemed like, oh, granted, we only really got to know like the the sports boys. But they were very, like, mm -hmm. jock, no-feeling sort of people. And he was, like, yeah. a, like a sensitive boy with feelings. But he wasn't cute. He, his eyebrows looked so bad. I think maybe if they, like, get... Anyway, big soccer game. Big soccer big match. Soccer time. Everyone's mad. Duke's mad at Sebastian. Duke's mad at Sebastian. Real Sebastian um, gets woken up. Because he's in the room with Duke because that's like his real room. And he's told to go join the soccer game. And he just does. Um, which, no, <laughs> would not have gone. <laughs> you leave. He was so confused that he just did it. He was like, whatever. And he played horribly. He got kicked out of the game. Whatever. And then um, they stop the game for Mr. Creep with the stalker wall from earlier. Um, mm -hmm. He told the headmaster that, um, like, the big secret, and then they um, announced it to the whole stadium, because that's what you do. Um, and it w at this point, it was real Sebastian playing, and he, um, mm -hmm. he was like, I'm not a girl, and then they were like, approve it, and then he just takes his pants off! He just takes his pants Boys off! Boys are like that. Boys are like, oh my goodness, rage, oh my god. I have so many stories of like, the boys, like, when they do this in water polo, they do this thing called deck changing, which is they don't go in the locker room, they just tie a towel around their waist and change like that, which is like fine and dandy, whatever, I don't care. But like, sometimes that doesn't always go to plan, okay? And sometimes you see more than you need it to. So boys just don't care. The stadium was packed and he just... My thing is, though, right, I would get if he had been on the team the whole time and he's like, haha, this is funny, right? But he, he just showed up no like idea what was going less on. than 24 hours he before. He had absolutely no idea what was going on. He was like, I'm not a I girl. Mean, I said, go, my... go home. Yeah, I guess so. I just, I have so oops, many. Oops, don't do it. I have so many questions and thoughts and feelings. Yeah, um, no, I. So, anyway, that, go home. that happened. And then everybody's like, 
you guys are crazy. He's obviously a guy we saw the mm -hmm. proof. Um, <laughs> we verified it, okay? <laughs> the whole world verified it. Um, and then it was halftime and girl Sebastian and boy Sebastian switched and girl Sebastian convinced the coach to let him on the team. Mm -hmm. And then I don't remember exactly how it happens, but... Um, Real quick. Yes. My thing is, though, right, if you were playing with someone... And then, like, halfway through the game, they just, like, like they looked different. Because they didn't look similar enough to pass that off. Well, like, he went to the locker room, came back, and then I was, I'd be like, dude, what? Specifically for Channing Tatum, I kind of let it go because he refused to look at Boy Sebastian. Yeah. But, yeah, everybody or not else. Even, not, even, not even Viola at Sebastian. It definitely would have been the other way around because they... They had all gotten used to Viola as Sebastian, so mm -hmm. when real Sebastian showed up at the game, I'd be like, who that? Who is this guy? Yeah. It, you kind of look right, but... But something's, something's off. Yeah. Um, anyway, they switch, and Channing Tatum is still refusing to give Amanda Bynes the ball, and she's like, yo, I didn't kiss Olivia because I'm a girl. And then he's like... And then uh, he's like... She says, I love you. And then Channing Tatum says, that's a little weird. <laughs> <laughs> that's a little, that's suspicious. It's, it's like this big emotional moment. She's like, I love you. And he's like, that's just a little weird. Which is the right answer. That's uh, what happened in Mulan, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Don't quote me on it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you're right. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably right. Look how it happened. Um, but she goes from, and then... She also has to prove she's a girl. And I guess this is just how their brains work as a family. Or <laughs> no, this as is the best. This is a great part of the As movie. a twin okay. unit. So I do like I do like that they're similar in that twin regard. Telepathy. She's like, I'm a girl, and then she just whoop. Yeah. She's not wearing a sports bra. I look, I don't have if listen, if she didn't have enough boobs to not need a sports bra, she didn't have enough boobs to be binding. Yeah. And like, even I. And like, not to not to itty bitty titty committee shame, but like. No, I have a cups, and even I need to wear a sports bra if I'm going to be doing a lot of like running. That would hurt. Yeah. That would hurt. <laughs> also, the oh, I can't even think about that. <laughs> the stadium is still full. <laughs> <coughs> also, like they're the same height. I just have a lot of questions. Like no one was like Sebastian. You look a little weird. Are you feeling okay? <laughs> You grew three inches. <laughs> also, I'm pretty sure she wasn't wearing her boy eyebrows for most of the... <laughs> no, then... she wasn't. <laughs> maybe, well, yeah, maybe she went and got him done. I don't know. Dude kicked her out. She had a bad night, right? <laughs> but, like, I guess there's no better way to prove that you're a... I don't know. I just... Of the things I would do at a soccer game, I mean, the other flashing the stadium is not up... The other well, option is not taking off her pants. <laughs> Kalina, that is never an option. That's what her brother did. So, like, <laughs> that would have been my first guess. So I'd been like, okay, well, he did that. Well, problem the, solved. the obvious thing was just call the real Sebastian out there and be like, <laughs> see, you didn't need no, to I show. I don't think he's reliable. I don't yeah, think that's not. true. He, he like does dude. suck. Yeah. We went um, off to London for two weeks in high school. Also... Amanda Bynes, uh, she was saying this to Channing Tatum in relation to um, him thinking that she had kissed Sebastian. Or, no, Jesus. So she said this to Channing Tatum in relation to Channing Tatum thinking that Amanda Bynes, Sebastian, had kissed Olivia, the girl that Channing Tatum is into. Mm -hmm. Okay. She said, I didn't, she was like, see, I didn't betray you. Like, yeah, you spent the whole movie lying to him. <laughs> well, That's... no, no, no. See, if you spend, if you start off lying to someone, you never betray them. You just gave, like, because <laughs> so. the basis was already bad. I... It's not like you were like, I'm going to do X, Y, and Z, and then you did this other thing. I guess so. Okay. I guess that's a good point. I, you, you just you, set up false expectations. You did get me there. She never yeah, specifically you. said, I am not my twin sister. <laughs> Um, also, then Channing Tatum has this super, like, emotional moment where he's like, it's like the coach always says before a big game. He didn't say that. The coach was never nice. The whole... <laughs> We've seen the coach a lot. He was... He... I don't think he... <laughs> he did not say that. 
it's like this big emotional speech and like he does not say that before they were they were we've seen at least two soccer games prior to this they had time <laughs> to set up that he said that before a game maybe he meant like a different coach <laughs> like a <your> life coach <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Channing Tatum's in touch with his feelings. He goes to therapy, okay? <laughs> no, therapist. I don't think he does. <laughs> yeah, he does. See, he remember he said he was like, um, the physical stuff is cool, but like, I want, I want to get to know someone. Boy is hero for not wanting to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like coach is just code name for his therapist, obviously. Come on. <laughs> so, anyway, they win the big game. And Viola takes so a wins a g- <laughs> makes a goal makes a um she does the thing in soccer that gets you a point and the person <laughs> got <laughs> Viola makes a goal yes in the big soccer game and the person guardy. The goalie. <laughs> Eleanor, you should know that word. Okay. That's the one word you should know. The goalie mm-hmm. is her ex-boyfriend. And he is and he mean sucks. to her. And he's like, I Shut taught her. you how to play. I know how to... Um, but also, it, I just have a lot of questions. Because we're... I guess... We open the movie and it seems like he taught her how to play soccer and he's like why she's so good at soccer but then it also seems like she's been playing soccer the whole time she's been at Cornwall so I don't know which one's true and like I think it's the first one I think he like talked because remember when she when she was like you told me I was better than all the guys on your team and he was like nope I don't know who I ever said that that was me that couldn't possibly be me was she on the team himself up before no, so when you mean at Cornwall? Yeah. No, there was a girls' team and the guys' team, so obviously he saw her play. I think they had the same coach. Okay. So like he'd seen her play, so that was the whole promise is that is that Cornwall the girls' team got cut, and then they wouldn't let her play on the boys' team. So she was like, "Fine, no, no, I'm no. gonna go pretend to be my brother." I know, but did she play soccer prior to their? relationship and then he just took credit for her being good for soccer is that what happened okay yeah all right then that makes sense because he sucks um also my biggest beef with okay no i've said that like three times another beef i have the (laughs) the the divorced parents of the twins um like get back together at the end of it yeah and i just a that wasn't necessary and b i don't think my parent trapped it up yeah Parent trap. Well, maybe they were like, That's... our kids are hard enough to keep track of by ourselves, so we were just better off together. Like, I was saying, you know how Bill Gates is getting divorced? Mm-hmm. I was like, um, my mom and I have this thing, though, like, um, where, at, like, at a certain age, what's the, what's the point? The point of what? Getting divorced. Like, if I'm past, like, think, like, 50, okay? I've lived more than half my life. We don't have to, like, live in the same place. But, like, what's the point of us going through the hassle of getting a divorce, all right? It's been this long. I say we just ride it out to the end. I don't agree at all. But also, Colleen and I, I don't think, share the same um, opinions and outlooks on marriage or divorce or relationships in general. And I don't think this is the platform. Uh, Will you both agree that we want to be married, that it would be nice? Yes, I also think it would be very funny to get married just to get divorced. Um, and nobody else yeah, in my life See, I want to get married idea. once, and if that doesn't work out, then that was a sign from God it wasn't for me, and I won't do it again. But, okay. I mean, I, I see your point, but also I don't agree. Anyway, the parents, like, get back together at the end, and... Yes, the parent trapped it up, as I said. As somebody with divorced parents... Mine didn't even like being in the same room. They would not sit next... If they went to, like, the same thing, like, my same extracurricular, they would not sit next to each other. I have a friend whose parents... I hope I'm not airing her dirty laundry. But her parents are divorced. And then they, like... 
I think her dad moved out and then he moved back in and her, she said that they got along a lot better after they got divorced and moved back in together than they did when they were married. So like, everyone's different. It's okay. I have a family member who divorced, they got divorced and then after like a year they got remarried. That doesn't make no sense. It's just very confusing. That don't make that no so kind of sense. Yeah. And like, I, I guess they're like, really happy now, but like what? Cause that's just I a lot can, of paperwork. I, want, I believe in getting married once, right? And like, not for everyone, for me personally, I believe in getting married mm -hmm. once. But like, if you want to get married, what, remarry, that's fine. But if, one, I think when you get remarried, you should obviously, like, you know what to look for now, so you should take it slowly. Mm -hmm. And two, if you're going to get remarried to the same person, just don't do it. Just like, you can be together. Well, if you're going to get time, what's the remarried point to the same person, yeah, what? And just, it was, like, very just... quickly that they got... Re so it's, like, what? I... Like, what happened between point one and 1. 1.5? Because we didn't even make it to two yet. Like, okay. yeah. anyway, anyway, they got back together. They got back... Debutante ball. Yes, there's a debutante ball, which... I have a letter I open. still don't know... I still don't know what that is. Um, it's when they debut the... Taunts. Thank you, Kalina. That's when they debut the debutantes. Is that what you're going to say to me? <laughs> no, that's when they debut the taunts, obviously. Okay. Yeah, no, it's when they're like, these are, I think in olden times, they would have been of age to be married because, you know, people died really early. So I think it's kind of like, here are my eligible daughters. She's 16. She can produce you 15 good kids and then die in 10 years. So I think it's kind of like, the basically, I think it's like, I think it started out as okay. my daughter is of age to be married. Yeah, so originally the term meant that the woman was old enough to be married. If you had the word it, pulled up, why'd you get well, me Well, because I was just pulling it up as you were talking. It says, and part of the purpose of her coming out was to display her to eligible bachelors with a view to marriage with a little I dance like card. That. A little dance card. Anyway, are you showing something? No, you have a little dance card. It's on your wrist, and then they sign it when they dance with you, and you have, like, so many dances. And oh. then once you have all your dances signed off, you can't dance anymore. I don't like that. You didn't that. know that? No, I... Oh, yeah, we, we, we used to have dance cards, and then everyone you dance with had to sign it for each song. Like, sign, like if they took you for song, like, one song, they signed it, and you only had, like, let's say six dances on the card. I'm pretty sure. I've only, I'm only getting this from shows, but, like, once your card was full, you couldn't dance with anyone else? Mm-hmm. To be, you know, polite and correct and a nice young lady, which, um, if, which is not, not what, um, I would qualify myself as. I'm a young lady and I can be nice. Those two things together? You are young. Mm-hmm. And so anyway, at the debutante ball, <laughs> um... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, Viola introduced it in. Uh, so now everyone's squared away. Everyone knows Viola was pretending to be Sebastian, but now she's really Viola. Sebastian's back. Parents are back together. Um, I think Sebastian and Olivia start dating, and Viola invites Duke to the ball, I think. Mm -hmm. And there's oh. this. Well, Viola's helping everybody else get ready, and there's this scene where. She's standing outside and she sees some guy walking and she's like, I didn't think you'd come. And then she starts this big old speech and then it's just like the groundskeeper. <laughs> and I, I did think that was really funny. And he was like, I just have um, to turn those sprinklers on. <laughs> like she's having a you moment. <laughs> He's not having it. Um, what I was thinking was, so Sebastian's like Duke's actual roommate now. Once everything's squared away. And, like, I'd be so annoyed if I made friends with this person I thought was Sebastian. And then I had to start all over with the same dude. I'd be like, I just went through. What did I do the last two weeks? You got oh, yeah, duped for the last two weeks is what happened. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, and then Duke is there and they, like, go to the ball together, whatever. So, um, Monique, the insufferable girlfriend, mm -hmm. is with mm -hmm. Justin, the insufferable ex-boyfriend. Mm -hmm. Which it just doesn't Misery make sense, company. but good for them. Um, Olivia. I think it's one of those cases where they both are just going to complain so much and neither will listen to the other. <laughs> so they both feel like they're being listened to. That works. Um, let's see. And then Olivia is with real Sebastian. And then fake mm -hmm. Sebastian, a.k.a. Viola, is with Duke. 
Um, and then again, they kiss each other in front of so many people. I would never kiss. I'm not kissing anybody at my wedding. I don't. Mm -hmm. People don't need to see that. Don't kiss me in public. We're gonna like high five and call it a day. Yeah. No, we'll get like a, like I'll like nod at you from across the room. I don't think I want a wedding. I just think that's way too much attention. Like, don't kiss in front of your no, mother. No, I like want a wedding. Like the whole like, but I want like a wedding where I I decided I'm gonna do a destination wedding, because I don't want a lot of people at my wedding. So if I do it somewhere that's not in the country, less people will they, show up. Well, no, I don't have to invite them because I'll just be like, well, I didn't want you to have to go out your way, blah blah blah. You um, will get you know, a card just, so you know to send me money. Yeah, but it was going to be on this remote time. island, and they had, like, a limit on how many people could be on the island at one time. <laughs> there, I know it's um, 2046, but, like, you know, COVID, COVID. remember that. Oh, I'm know. definitely going to be milking that. I do need to get married in, like, the next two years or so, to mil <laughs> but I'll be milking that. Just, you know, I just... So Callum Hood. No, 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 obviously it's, like, you call it a retro wedding, but it's not retro. It's just you want to do social distancing, so only ten people are invited. <laughs> See, that's why I can't marry anyone rich or famous. I, I, I can't marry Callum Hood. Because then they'll be like, but you have the budget for... No, it's just... No, no, no. We're, we're Karina, trying to Karina, you're thinking about it all wrong. That's why yeah. you marry somebody rich and famous. Because they'll want a private wedding, too. Yeah. And, like, Come they on. can't... You know, yeah. Obviously. Obviously. You're, Come on. You look, you're on to something. Get it. I don't want anyone at my wedding. Don't come. <laughs> Can I come? Am I invited? Oh, Eleanor's invited. Okay. Um, my mother, my father, and my brother are invited. My grandfather says he wants to be dead before I get married, so he's on the list, but I don't think he'll be coming. And then I'm. <laughs> he wants to myself. be there, but only in spirit. Yeah, he said he'd like. I don't know. He said he wouldn't survive that or something, so he wants to be dead before I get married. So I'm giving myself 10 people maximum if I'm inviting. My thing is, like, my family's pretty small. No, oh, my family's huge on both sides. My family is pretty small, I think, but like, I don't want, I don't think it's fair for the person I'm marrying to have more guests than I have. Um, no, but I, I don't <laughs> care. You get, he gets 30 guests and I get 10 and I'm giving him 30 just to be nice. Nope. We each get five and they all have to pay for themselves if they want to come. My folks had six people at their wedding. So like, that's what I'm trying to be on, you know? I took a BuzzFeed quiz cause I was really bored and it was like, your dream wedding will determine whatever what type of berry you are something stupid i mean it was like how many people will be in attendance and the first option was more than 200 i don't think i have 200 oh, facebook God, friends I, I mean like 200 if you count the people working at the venue and all the people that helped me get to that yeah point. and all the people like in the state yes. and... yeah <laughs> but like uh, yeah no i want 50 people max yeah. Anyway, the very end of the film, um, Viola and Duke are together and they're playing soccer together and they're really happy. Um, do people date on sports team? I feel like people... I was just about to say, I used, when I was in high school, I used to think it'd be so really, oh, it's so fun to have a water polo boyfriend because we could talk about water polo, but like, that's all you would talk about. I feel like that'd like, be very I don't know annoying. What else who, I don't know what else people who date each other talk about, but like... <laughs> It's... And especially, I think there's an added layer here, given that I thought you were a dude this whole time, and I talked about things that I would only yeah. talk about dudes with you. I think, I think... I feel like I think that would could, be a lot I to get over. Get away with it. Yeah, I think you could date someone who plays the same sport as you, but I think it's hard if you're on, the, if you play at the same place, and I think it's extra hard if you play on this exact same team. Yeah, that's another thing. Um, the the coach from the other side, he was like, the, you know, girls being on boys teams isn't allowed in this league. And then the coach just ripped up the handbook and like, that doesn't take the rule away. Like, did they have some <laughs> legislative words. changes we weren't made aware of? Or did he just Maybe decide? Maybe just in charge. Maybe they, that was one of the points they didn't get to cover. Also, he, he was handbook, so British like, oh, for no reason. Everyone's, I mean, is anyone British for a reason? Um, yeah, because the movie's set in Brit- I guess he was just British because Shakespeare? I don't know. Oh. No, oh, there's no reason to oh, be British. One of the characters, I think it was the mean coach, it was the hot dad from Sweet Life. Mm -hmm. I liked that. He was so mean, and I was like, I don't even care, you're the hot dad from- That guy. 
Oh man, he was like a rock. He was a really bad dad, but he was a rock star. It's pretty cool. Anyway. Anyway, I think we're at the end of the movie. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in. Um, we will try to watch a movie from this decade, possibly. But probably not, because these movies are fun. Yes. Um, and next time we come back, we're going to talk about something else. Don't ask me what. Don't ask Eleanor what. We don't know. Nope. We don't and know until we, we start to filming. Do, that I'm going to do now is follow us on, we have an Instagram. It's don't quote us on that. And we have a Twitter. It's don't quote us 27, I think. And then we're also on TikTok. Just don't quote us on that. Mm -hmm. and we're really funny. We are very funny. We're so funny. Um, so if you want some more quality content that I made at 3 o'clock in the morning, follow us. Yeah. And thank you for tuning in, and we will see you next week. One day we'll have outro music, but, like, not today. <laughs>